So we're going back down into the hold here. Um, of course, that's the back of the instrument panel. Pilot sits here, co-pilot sits here, and uh, plenty to grab onto everywhere. This is actually connected to the uh, the rudder post. Okay, it's uh, actually measured their rudder. They're all push-pull systems all the way to the back of the airplane. <coughs> um, this, I believe, I don't know, one is the aileron and one is the elevator. I can't tell you. Oh, here we go. <coughs> no, I didn't see it. But anyway, one of these is the rudder. One of them is the elevator. That's the, that's the rudder. One of these is the aileron and one of them is the elevator. So that's that. Okay, so let me put the... Put the hatch back in. And it's interesting too because this airplane is painted blue. And right now it's a bit of a cloudy day. And when it's not a cloudy day, you cannot believe how hot this thing gets inside. It's over the top hot. Okay. That takes care of that. Continuing our tour. Okay, so we're going in the back here. Uh, this is a bit of a place where they, I think, stow baggage and stuff. Okay. Oh, here we go. This one's the aileron. I think I decided that was the rudder. So it's got to be the elevator here. And, uh, of course, all the different separate compartments have these watertight bulkheads which they uh, keep shut uh, when it's in the water when it's flying um, there's the entrance where we came in this is the uh, stairwell to heaven actually to the upper deck uh, you can see the system here closing the door off to make it watertight pretty uh, sophisticated uh, the airplane electrical system has two batteries, like those old uh, World War II GE 50s. You can see where the they cl click them in. So you got two batteries, and then eventually you we're going to go to an APU compartment. They have two auxiliary power units, and then there's when the engines are above a certain RPM, you've got uh, uh, basically four engine-driven generators. Okay, so down here. Uh, like I said, on uh, this particular airplane, the fuel cells are actually below here or in this area. And like I said, in the Hawaii Mars, some of these have been actually uh, disconnected and they're using them actually for the water. And they're kind of in the back there. So in the Hawaii Mars, uh, some of it's fuel and some of it's water. In this case, um, this is a water tank. And like I said, uh, they're split. So you've got a port side and you got a starboard side. This is a uh, says refueling compartment. This is an air sealed deal so you can't have any fumes. You can smell the fumes. Anyway so there's uh, the things and all that kind of stuff and a lot of times they'll leave the uh, they'll leave the compartment. Uh, actually there's a little hatch on the outside that allows that to basically vent if they need to. These, uh, you can see that the, uh, the throttles are basically push-pull as well, and they're very, very smooth. I mean, for the distance they've got to go, I can't believe how smooth they are. You can see how they transfer here from one side to the other. Oh, and actually, I can tell you what, that, some are throttles and some are probably like mixtures and uh, what else would they have, the uh, carburetor alternate air and stuff. Uh, this probably all has something to do with the water system back here that I'm not familiar with. Okay, I'll tell you what. I am going to crawl through this. Um, I tell you what, you know I'm not. I'm going to tell you. So this is one way. When you're flying, you actually have to go through here. Uh, let me go ahead and turn it around. I'll just I'll go through like this. All right, so we're going through through here and what happened I've been through here before and what happens is when you get reasonably 
through. See, my butt fits up until now. And now my butt doesn't fit, so now I'm down on my knees and my elbows. And now I've got 56 of hydraulic fluid on my forearms. I can't believe what I do for you Facebook fans. I hope you all appreciate this. Oh, God. I just turned 63 the other day, too. Not bad for an old man. I'm still a kid. Okay, there we go. Oh, my God. Yeah, see all the 5606 leaking out? Unfortunately, I soaked up some of it for him. Okay, so here we are in the back deck. You can see where this actually goes down to where the... Uh, one of the probes, okay? That's for the starboard tank. Here's the port probe, goes down below us, okay? It is unbelievable how great a shape these airplanes are. And I haven't seen any corrosion anywhere. These airplanes have been in the salt. They've been outside their whole life. I don't think they've ever been in a maintenance hangar. And uh, these guys have taken really great care of them. They do NDP checks on the spars and everything, you know. So anyway, I think one of the reasons that they're not going to be able to continue flying and is not so much the fact that they're the best water bomber for turnarounds for water drops per day, but uh, there's some politics going on. And uh, I think the excuse is they're 70 years old and we need to upgrade them. But uh, Anyway, so here we are in a rear deck. This would be for loading and unloading cargo. So cargo compartment here. So we got a port and a starboard side. And of course, you know, then they would load stuff up there. And also too, anything that they would load into here, there's another upper deck right here. And that basically has two doors here that go to the upper deck on this side and then over here as well, this door would open up if you unlashed it there and there. And uh, you can see how all the same type of bell crank mechanism is for locking everything off here. And then there's like a little strap up there that's probably got like a, you know, a little uh, spring in it or something like that. Okay, so anyway, so we're in the back here. And uh, now we're going to go up to... The rear deck, okay, is this cool or what? So this is basically the back of the stern right here of the, uh, you know, of the hull. And then it starts curving up. So now we're going up here to the upper deck. Sounds like they're cranking something up out there. I don't know what. Again, another door. Uh, this is back in the tail cone. And back in here, these are the two electrical hydraulic pumps that operate the hydraulic pressure for the control boost. Uh, this particular airplane, the ailerons are actually, there's no boost on the ailerons. They're basically free ailerons, so they're kind of aerodynamically boosted. And uh, basically, uh, the rudder and the elevator have got a hydraulic boost on them. One, I think, is about, uh, I think, I forgot, 67% of the boost and, and the other one's at uh, 80. I think, the, I think the rudder's 80 and, and it's one or the other. Anyway, they're boosted up. So basically, this supplies the pressure. These have to be on pretty much when you're flying. And the guys have told me that if you lose this, other than the ailerons, you cannot move the rudder and the elevator physically one guy. Two guys might have a little bit of a chance, but you basically fly the airplane with a trim. And uh, so some solenoids, you know, the lines. And part of the deal here is if they, the emergency procedures, if these fail, there's like a bypass kit here with a hose and the engineer comes back here and does something. A couple of fuel filters. Again, here we go. We've got like the, you know, the rudder and the elevator. Uh, tubes going back and if you look right here here's the rams to boost the elevator so here's the elevator post right here this is the elevator push tube from the cockpit and basically the these rams here you know would give up and down elevator and back here would be the rudder push 
tube from the from the controls in the front here's the rudder post okay and basically here if you look up you can see the rams for the rudder for the left and the right so basically up here you know there's the rams you can see them leaking some 5606 fluid and uh, here's the rudder post this is the elevator post and if you look outside you can actually see the elevator out there. I forgot to mention all the control surfaces including the flaps are fabric. All the control surfaces including the flaps are fabric. Okay now one of the things they do to lock the controls is back here they've got a pin and the rudder pin is basically, let me get up here, is basically right here, okay? If this pin comes out right here, it gets pulled out, that's what pins the rudder, okay? So this pin comes out, and over here, there's a pin that the pilot pulled, that you pull out here, the engineer would pull out, that basically is the elevator lock, okay? And there's a aileron lock up in the cockpit, there's a key connected to this system back here, and the only way you can unlock the control column where the ailerons are locked is by having this piece right here. So there's no way you can unlock the front controls and not have these unlocked. So that was pretty smart on Martin's part. So anyway, so that's that. So here we go, another view of the rudder rams, the elevator rams, I'm sorry. And here's a view of the rudder control boost rams, okay? Of course, we got some shut off valves and other things here. So now we're moving forward. And this ladder right here, basically part of the pre and the post flight checks is you go up this ladder here and there's, I think that's the hydraulic tank for the, for the control boost. And I came up here one day on a post flight and this tank was pretty warm. But basically there's a door here that opens on the port side there's a door here that opens on the starboard side, and it's just forward of the, the vertical fin. You actually get out here, and up in the, on each side, there's basically some hand grips up there. You can grab those and get out on the horizontal stabilizer, uh, you know, which you can do. You, you don't want to stand on the elevators because they're fabric. And uh, basically, once you get out there, you can look for uh, inspect uh, sometimes exhaust stacks will break off. They're, they're, they're basically straight exhaust stacks and sometimes when they go back they can damage the fabric on the elevator and stuff. So, Or maybe the leading edge. So basically that's part of the part of the post flight. Okay so here we are moving forward to what I consider the obvious disco dance floor in case you wanted to turn this into a party boat. There's the uh, stairs going back down to the lower deck where we came up. Here's, uh, again, two escape hatches. Uh, again, the elevator and the rudder tubes coming from the flight deck. A few windows. Of course, this is where they would have had a lot of litter stretchers, you know, when they used to bring the wounded back from Korea. Probably in the upper deck. Uh, my understanding was they could, I may be wrong, but I seem to remember a number of like 150. And so here is uh, where the door slides up that we looked at before. And that's the hatch that basically allows them to upload cargo. Oh, it's actually in two doors actually, so you can actually unlatch one or two. Okay, so here's another compartment here. Nice view looking back. Pretty cool. The disco ball would kind of go right in the middle there. You know, this obviously would be the area where you'd want to put your bar. And uh, there we go, you know, some uh, change in the direction of the push-pull tubes to the middle from the cockpit. Again, another sealed door. And basically from here, we're going into the APU compartment. And as you can see, we've got one APU uh, here, okay. This looks like uh, part of the fire suppression system. 
we got another APU over here, and you always take off and land with these runnings, and the, with them running. And the engineer actually has to physically come back and start these back here. You can't start them from the panel. And this is the first time I've ever been up here when the hatch was open. So let's take a nice peek at this. Let me get myself settled so I don't bust my butt here. Okay, I'm settled in. All right, so pretty cool. I've walked around on the uh, Hawaii Mars when it's in the water, but uh, I don't dare walk on the Philippine Mars on the land here. And normally, anytime you do that, you would have a safety strap you'd connect yourself to. Otherwise, man, if you fell off this thing, you would be a dead piece of meat. Yeah, so actually, if you look back there on the tail, you can see those two handles just above there. So the two little hatches are just forward of the horizontal stabilizer on each side. That's where you come out, you grab those handles and basically pull yourself up to do the inspection check. Like I said, you can't really see it from here, but uh, those actually have straight stacks on them. They're about a foot long. And there's a great shot of the, uh, of the lift spoilers, you know, for putting it on the land. Although I think if it was a hurricane, I think I'd want a much stronger cable there. When I was in uh, Hurricane Andrew, we had a Hurricane 5, came through my place. And uh, granted, where I'm at now, we wouldn't see more than about 120 miles an hour. But in Andrew, we had 200 mile an hour winds. I had a couple airplanes tied down and there were no ropes to be seen later. On the tie down spot or on the airplane, the ropes were completely gone. So. I think if I was going to leave it outside in a hurricane, I'd want to tie that down a little bit better. Okay, so let me set up the camera here so I don't bust my butt. Getting down. Okay, that was nice of them to leave that open. Now, this is kind of interesting. This is the rear spar. And up there is the front spar where the other exit uh, entry hole is up there. And you can actually crawl not only inside the main wing, but you can actually crawl in the, in the back of the wing. And I tell you what, let me set myself up here. Okay, what do you say we go? Let's go right here. Alrighty, uh, of course you can see the flaps back there. Like I said, they're basically, I don't need to go too far out here. Try to see if this thing will, if there's something wrong with the way this thing's pointing. But anyway, Ugh! Come dang. I can't get my butt in here. There's a big bell crank for more than likely the ailerons. You can see the flap wells right there. The flaps have drooped just slightly. Like I mentioned, uh, they're basically, uh, yeah, you can see, but you can basically go pretty far out there. I don't see any reason why I need to go any further than this. The interesting part is going to be the between the rear and the front spar. That's the rear spar right there. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's pick it up out of here. Busting my butt. that. I'm sure there's nothing overly different over on this side. Oh, 
was a hatch laying out there for some reason. I'm not sure what this, oh, some kind of a air duct. Oh, that's the exhaust for the APUs. Pretty sure that's what that's for. Some of the pulleys going out to the aileron system probably. I don't know what that's for. I didn't see that in the other side. Anyway, okay, that's pretty cool. All right, let's go head inside. I don't know if I wear my hat on here or not. Out a little bit. I'll lose my hat. Here we go into the bowels of the of the main wing. Okay, so basically. That's up into the cockpit. We'll get there pretty soon. Looks like a couple of emergency hand pumps, probably to pump the flaps down. Looks like a electric hydraulic motor there, maybe for the flaps. I don't know if that's a spare. I got a couple of fire bottles here. This looks like Halon. So that's in the back. But I think the interesting part is in the front. Well, no, I'm not getting through there. That's for dang sure. Well, let's just take a peek at what we got here. Okay, so we got some of the, the rudder and the elevator tubes going into the back over there. There's a lot going on there. Looks like an accumulator over there. We got lines going out. Some kind of a valve there for something normal, direct, off. That's probably for the flaps. I would just take a guess. It's like somebody's got a brand new tank there for something. There's some old uh, brackets for another tank that used to be there, so maybe they just modified it. Anyway, so let's go out. We're not going out that way. And this side looks a little more interesting. And there's obviously walkway that way let's just go out this way there's a hell of a lot less crap to hit let's just see what we can get here that one foot step at a time per rib all right this is so freaking cool are you ready for this I am now behind the number three engine, and guess what you can do? Is that freaking cool or what? Hey, actually, that's the firewall. You can actually get in the leading edge, okay? That's the hull over there. And looking down there, you can actually go down the leading edge and get behind the engines. Oh my freaking god. Oh god. Alright, we got some push-pull things we don't want to mess with. Basically, you can crawl out quite a ways out there and they could actually undo, they would feather an engine in flight, okay? And the mechanics could actually go out and work on the engine and or put oil in it. How cool is that? Huh? All right, I'm just gonna back here as gracefully as I can. There's some like pulleys push tubes for probably the engines control. Not quite as big as the spruce goose, but the same basic concept. Alright, I'm starting to sweat now. This blue airplane is uh, 
pretty hot. All right, let me just try. Back my foot up. Far enough. Get that hat. Oh God. The things I do for my Facebook fans. Okay, so here I can actually go out. I'm just gonna basically take a peek. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that's about as best I can do. Hopefully you can see around. Okay, here we go. Back inside. looking at out there okay back into here oh my god looks like some uh, electrical like pressure sensor here that's probably for the wall pressure wall temperature because I know those are electrical Yeah, I'm hot now. Okay, now we're going up to where the fun is. <laughs> 